Boba Fett was a cold-blooded killer who worked with the Empire. We're not looking for no trouble. I can take him, boss. Stand down, deputy. I don't think I can do that! Your deputy's making me... hungry. He tends to have that effect on people. Okay, people, welcome back to another foosh excuse to play with toys while calling it a review. Gonna be truthful. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Deluxe Cobb Vanth. I'm still on the fence with this whole deluxe thing. I don't know why this had to be a deluxe release. Apparently, it's because of the extra paint apps. But it's a character I wanted, I needed, because, hey, it's Timothy Oliphant in Star Wars wearing Boba Fett gear. It's like a triple whammy. That's almost too much sexiness in one character that I needed in plastic form. Looking at the package, it's your standard deluxe packaging. It's a little bit wider. Really, that's about it. Windows showing you most of what you get, except for maybe his feet or if there's anything hiding down there. The Mandalorian color scheme that works around to some artwork of Cobb Vanth. They put this right beside this. That's another thing we're going to talk about. On the back, bigger picture, background. Attention includes figure and four accessories, warning, small parts. Don't put them in your mouth. On the other side, not much. Color stripe, window on top, more window on bottom. There's your legalese, some little and stuff. Let's get this open. More warnings in case you missed it on the outside of the box. Ah, tape. Get out of there. And messing around with it for a bit, I do like it. But I don't think that was ever in question. <laughs> I was I was predetermined. I was destined to like it because it's Star Wars and I like this character. And while it does have problems, for the most part, it's a pretty good cop vanth. I mean, it has all the details I was looking for. Even these little nubs on the shirt. Like it's bedazzled or something. It seems like it would be uncomfortable, but I guess he wore this for a super long time. Both times we saw him, so it couldn't be that bad. Lots of sculpted detail on the belt here and stuff, but you can already tell I'm avoiding saying uh, not a lot of paint but this is also the back of the figure it seems like a lot of companies you know I do the same thing whenever I'm customizing but it's the place to go a little light with the paint to save on the budget I guess but again the sculpt is there these back pockets or whatever this is a patch maybe he tore his pants because this works down to some other random oddness again that may be another patch because it looks like it has little stitches going around it whatever this is and the pouch down at the knee on this side there's not a lot of that there's a ring sewn in that looks like it should be painted metal or something oh and then salt pepper and paprika the straps going around the top of the boots a nice leather look to it some wrinkles coming around to a flap on top of the foot and a sole the boba fett knee pad has the appropriate amount of silver showing through of paint scuff the gloves i never noticed this in the show that they had that kind of detail on the back of them that armored not armored look but it's padded some boba fett gauntlet going on which i'll compare here in a second to see if that's reused but i'm pretty sure this is off the deluxe boba fett in fact i'm bringing it in right now yeah it looks like the same piece. They modified these hoses going up to reach further up to the shoulder, whereas these go into this short sleeve. Same knee pad? Oh, it's not attached. Oh, hmm. Well, neither is Boba Fett's, but they did paint this detail on Boba Fett, not here. And I'm pretty sure this is the same overlay. They have the Fett crest at a different angle, but then you have a lot of silver on here. Same thing with the shoulder pad with the Mythosaur or the whatever they're calling this now. They did take off the braids. Same rockets, but again, I think in the Mandalorian, this was painted copper like this one. And then up at the head, I think the shape is here, but for some reason the paint is throwing it way off. There's too much gray to the beard. In the show, it's thinner. You can see skin tone under it, and it came up higher, I believe. And hell, they put so much paint on here, it went up on the nose. I've already put the helmet on a couple times, and I thought, oh, I scuffed it off, but it's skin tone underneath. So I didn't rub anything off. That's, at the factory, the beard paint getting up there. They did some photo reel shading to the forehead lines and then to the eyes. Same with the hair, darker gray with some light dry brush on top. It's a nice effect for like maybe a comic book Cobb Vanth. Overall, sculpt wise, I think this captures the character. There's that awkwardness, like when you first see him, you know he's not supposed to be wearing this armor. It's too short here, you can see some shirt and then the helmet sits too high on the head and I feel like that comes across. This captures that essence. And when it comes to paint, they did the scuffing nicely 
on the front of the armor, same on the red. This belt buckle, it pops out at you. It's got the appropriate wear and tear to it. And then again, down at the knee pad, it has some silver scuffed. The paint is worn. This armor's been through some shit. But that almost makes the lack of paint on the undershirt, the pants, and the boots more noticeable. In fact, if you look at the pants from the show, these look way off in color. But then I realized, if you look about right here, that this is the right base color for the pants, but there is so much tattooing dust and dirt and filth and grime that it lightened it up and made it almost a khaki color. And I think that's the same for the boots. They're too clean. There's not enough wear and tear to them. And again, gloves, the shirt, it could just use an overall wash. Well, kind of like what we saw with Boba Fett. His armor and everything was nicely painted, but then the undersuit was just this plain gray. I've actually put some pastels on this, rubbed in some dirt and grime, get him looking a little closer to what we saw on screen. I think there should be a red button and some color right here. I mean, I appreciate that they went out of their way to do the white, but then there's also the buttons here and some rivets and especially here. I think these are separate canisters with some netting around it. Also engineering wise, these cables coming down, there's not a lot of stretch to them. I am afraid. Well, okay. How about we go to the side like that? You can go full 90. I guess a minute ago I had it turned like this and I would try and it would stretch and I did not want to go full 90. Bring it here to the side. Okay. <laughs> I figured it out on the fly. Peeling this back a bit, there is actually shirt. Well, mm, it may be a flat torso under there in that kind of off red color. I was going to say they were already preparing to release this again. There's no detail to that upper torso under this rubber overlay, but that allows for the butterflies and the backpack to plug in. Also, I'm not quite sold on this bandana. It works. It has that flatness to the front of it. It's not terrible, but I'd like to see a cloth option. I may have to work on that at later, play day, something. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint at the top of the neck with a ball joint down at the bottom going into the body. Can get some up looks down let's get the bandana and put the chin there we go he can look down <laughs> maybe that that joint setup always gives us some beautiful tilt swivel side to side butterfly joint goes back forward pin in the shoulder that hose is actually plugged into the back of the arm so uh yeah hinges up hinges swivel elbow comes up to about 90 and then rotates in and out what's the left it goes past 90 what's the deal there oh this gauntlet comes down further there's more cut than that side. That's odd. Swivel at the gauntlet. Both sides. Swivel at the wrist. The right is a trigger finger hand, so you have the up and down hinge gunslinger hand, and then in and out on the left. Ball at the torso. Gets nice hula hoop, but not a lot of crunch. Tilt, tilt. And then it rotates at that same spot. There is a separation between the shirt and the pants that looks like a waist swivel but it's glued down. It is not budging. Ball at the hip comes up to right there, back there, and out. Oh, not shabby at all. Swivel at the thigh, nicely hidden by those seasonings. Hinge the swivel at the knee comes up past 90 and then rotates. Hinge at the ankle goes back, forward, forward facing pen for rocker. For accessories, comes with his rifle that we saw in the show. It's got the wraps. I would have liked to have seen those a little bit dirtier, but a little paint's better than nothing. And with that, it's a simple matter of just press, twist. Ooh. And then what's a gunslinger without his trusty revolver that has no problem going in? Feel justified? But if you don't want him gunslinging, you can sling it in the holster, which is just hanging loose. I'm used to this being pegged. At the same time, it gets out of the way of the leg, so I'm not going to complain about that. And it's not going to fall out. Comes with the jetpack. It's reuse of the Deluxe Boba Fett jetpack. Except for the rocket, of course. Lots of nice paint detail here. The reds, the blues, the scrapes, the silver showing through. The detail work with this gunmetal over the red and white. I wish this was sculpted. This plate that's supposed to be, well, it's supposed to be covering the damage from Return of the Jedi. At least they painted it on there. But I feel like the colors are too saturated, too dark. It should be worn and torn. <laughs> that's what I keep saying about this figure, but it, it, that's the best way to describe Cobb Vanth, worn and torn. And just like the Deluxe Boba Fett, it's a bit difficult to get it completely on there. These two pegs up top, gotta really go for it. But looks good. Then finally to top it all off, literally, is the helmet. This is ripped directly from Deluxe Boba Fett. That had a blank head underneath it. Here, it's hollow. It has more silver showing through. And this is articulated. I can see the pin in there, but I cannot get it to move. It is stuck. And I am 
scared as hell to push it too hard. On top of that, it's nice and straight all the way around. I couldn't ask for a better antenna or rangefinder, I guess, on Boba Fett's helmet. And in most cases, when you have a toy with a removable helmet, you don't want this hair up here. You want something to switch because it wouldn't fit on right. In this case, it fits perfect because, like I said earlier, Cobb Vance seemed kind of awkward in this armor. You knew this, this didn't belong to him, just how it hung on him. And it's same on the action figure. You get it down, and it doesn't want to go all the way down. You can kind of see his chin underneath. Again, this captures those proportions. Hell, the helmet doesn't even hardly fit right. It kind of flops around. It stays down, and it stays on, but it's also kind of good to get off. Top Vance stands at about, well, he stands exactly six inches to the top of that glorious hair, which I just looked it up. Oliphant is six foot tall. So this is essentially perfect. And it looks good with the two Black Series Mandalorians. This is the end of season one. This is the first of season one. I've replaced the capes and this is a helmet from Casting Cave. And then here he is with the Deluxe Return of the Jedi Boba Fett and the Tython Boba Fett. And then here he is with a Black Series Tusken Raider and a Book of Boba Fett Cad Bane custom I've been working on. How did I miss that? There is a hook right here for what seems like a lightsaber or something. I don't remember him having something on the belt. The only thing I can think of is that it helps him hold the helmet in his hand because that's not a tight grip on the helmet itself. Well, <laughs> you can't hardly find a spot that it's tight. And that seems to be the same width as the helmet. It fits right in there. Um, and maybe definitely a sweet spot to it though it doesn't just go in there it's not the easiest thing to use huh it's a little more secure that's all i've got i can't think of anything else so at the end of the day i love having Cobb Vanth on the shelf and i can kind of understand the deluxe thing i mean there is a lot of paint apps on the armor parts but why aren't there paints on the actual clothing underneath? Again, that's the same thing we said about the Deluxe Return of the Jedi Boba Fett. Nice figure, beautiful proportions, great sculpting, just missing paint in a lot of places. And at the time, it was kind of, oh, well, a lot of this can't be reused for something else. But then <laughs> parts of it was reused here. When this was solicited, at the time, we thought, well, this can't be used for anything else. So... I guess it's okay that Cobb Vanth gets the deluxe price, but then he showed up again without the Boba Fett stuff. So some of this can be reused, the legs, the upper arms, and I guess the lower torso and the belt and the head. Saying all that, I have made cuts on other lines in other places so I can accommodate my Star Wars collection because that's, as I always say, that's my bread and butter. That's my main line. If I had to drop everything and only pick one, it would be Star Wars. I'm shuffling around so I can still get my Star Wars stuff. We shouldn't have to come back and paint little details or do some wear and tear because that's, you know, God damn. But I did it with the Boba Fett. I'll probably do it with a figure coming up, mostly because I enjoy that kind of thing. I'm, I'm working on customs right now because I'm on a Star Wars kick, but I can completely see the whole, you know, we should not have to do that because we shouldn't. I like it but you're gonna have to make <laughs> your own decisions with your wallet. So if you enjoyed this, uh, I got a lot of gripes, but I still like it. Comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the whoosh. I can't decide if I want helmet on or off, but right here, look at this gunslinger pose. It's half because I know who's under there, but at the same time, I always thought of Boba Fett as, you know, that lone gunslinger. Mm -mm -mm. Cowboys, Boba Fett, Timothy Olyphant, Star Wars. I like it.